I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't even miss about anything! Not once, not one time! Wow. One of my most requested titles to talk about in the Hilariosity format has been Samurai Cop. Now that I've seen it, I understand why. It's barely even a movie. This thing wasn't even released in theaters. It went straight to VHS at some point, then just got buried by obscurity. Eventually it was rediscovered and now it is one of the best, worst movies of all time. And oh my god, having seen it, I can see why. I first heard about this movie from my buddy Fanboy Flicks. He did a really funny review of it and I was like, huh, that movie looks, uh, that movie looks special. So I decided to check it out myself. I don't even know where to begin. I really, there's just, there's so much shit to talk about. There's so much crap. This movie is unimaginably terrible. It fails at everything, but my god, it is entertaining to watch. So let's start talking about the beginning of Samurai Cop. From the very beginning, the opening title music sounds like a Sega Genesis game. If you watch this movie, one of the things you'll probably notice is that every single scene takes place in daylight. And that's because the filmmaker wasn't able to afford lighting to shoot at night. So every single scene in this movie <laughs> is during the day. And uh, they obviously have no idea what exposure is because many shots go back and forth, drastically changing exposure, color, time of day, sun position, everything. It honestly looks like the entire film was shot on one of those gigantic VHS camcorders. <laughs> Like the ones your grandpa used to have. Also prevalent in this movie is some of the most horrendous dubbing I've ever heard in my life. In no way we go under Fujiyama's flag. Yeah, that right there, that electronic warble, that's because the director dubbed a lot of the lines himself because he couldn't get the actors back in to do it. And so he recorded a lot of the dialogue himself and then tried to warp it in weird ways to make it sound different. The basic plot of Samurai Cop, if there even is one, is there's a gang that is into drugs and this cop who's recently come to the area who is known as Samurai because apparently he's speaks fluent Japanese, despite not being able to say Japanese names correctly. So anyway, you get on the phone and you tell me that these, uh, what's his name, Omaha, Yamaha, whatever his face, his name is, right? Are you Fuj, Fujiyama? As well as this scene. What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. <laughs> There's just, where do I start? Where do I fucking start with this thing? The movie mercifully lets us know what the action's gonna be like pretty early on with this horrendously choreographed and incredibly fake fight scene, but it's all the more hilarious for it. Are you sure this is a good bust? Yeah, cocaine. We're gonna go catch us some bad guys. We're gonna go catch us some bad guys? Yeah, nice wig, man. That's another thing to keep in mind. Apparently, the entire film was shot, or at least the lead actor thought so, so he cut his hair. The director then told him we need to do some reshoots, but he had cut all of his hair, so they had to find a wig, and all they could get was this incredibly feminine wig. And to the incredible horror of the lead actor, they still had about half the film to shoot. So he goes from ladies' wig to actual hair quite often. Also heavily prevalent in this movie, is absurd sexism. I mean, every woman in this movie looks like a porn star. Even random background people who are just walking around, they all look like they came off of a 1989 porn shoot. And every single time Samurai Cop is in a scene with a woman, he is always trying to get in her pants. Okay, Joe, keep it up. Oh, it's up and ready. Uh, you just keep it warm. It's warm and ready. So Samurai Cop and his partner are going after these drug guys. And by the way, I can't help but notice that these guys look remarkably like the Lethal Weapon pair. 
Mel Gibson, and Danny Glover. And this movie was being filmed only a few years after Lethal Weapon came out. So all I can think of is that the director saw Lethal Weapon, said that was amazing, let's recreate it, and now we have Samurai Cop. So the second action scene is this incredibly inept chase scene. Samurai Cop and his partner are chasing this van filled with druggies, and my god, it is just filled with way too many hilarious moments to even mention. You just have to see them. I don't know where, I, where do I fucking start? Where do, <laughs> and the best part of this whole thing is when the van driver catches on fire, he clearly changes ethnicities. Yeah, that's the same guy. The large majority of this sequence is Samurai Cop just saying, shoot him, shoot him, over and over again. And my favorite part, my favorite part <laughs> is when he's like, oh, you got him. Shoot, shoot him. Shoot, shoot him. Got the best. <laughs> Where do I start? And this leads us into our very first porn scene. And I'm not kidding. I mean, it's just, it's porn. I mean, the camera lingers on her body for absurd amounts of time. And then we get what has become known as the piano on the head scene. I want his head cut off and brought here. I want his head on this piano. I will bring you his head and I will place it on your piano. I will bring you his head and I will place it on your piano. <laughs> Right around here, I started to notice that almost every close-up has an absurd amount of space above their heads. It's almost like the director told the cinematographer, or the cinematographer did this on his own, to perfectly center the head. That's not how it works, guys. It's not how it works. Close-ups, the forehead has nothing interesting, okay? Close-ups usually start right above the eyebrow. But almost every close-up in this movie has like this crazy amount of space above the hairline. It's so ugly. And I gotta be honest, the next scene in this movie involving a nurse is one of the most insane things I have ever seen in my life. And I mean that in all honesty. All I can do is basically mimic my reactions to having watched this. And that's the best way I can let you know what I thought. Do you like what you see? I love what I see. Would you like to touch what you see? Yes, yes I would. Would you like to go out with me? Uh, -huh. yes I would. Would you like to fuck me? <laughs> Bingo. Well then let's see what you've got. Doesn't interest me. Nothing there. Nothing there. <coughs> Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? Have you been circumcised? Yeah, I have. Why? Well, your doctor must have cut a big portion of it off. No, he, uh, he was a good doctor. Good doctors make mistakes, too. That's why they buy insurance. Hey, don't worry. I got enough. Big. I want bigger. You have got to be fucking kidding me. His partner's reactions, everything about that scene, it's just insanity. So the gang sends the swordsman to cut off the burnt guy's head because they doesn't want him to talk. And then we get this weird escape scene that has two cuts from the exact same hallway laced right next to each other. And in the following scene, we get count them four. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Another thing that's become famous about this movie is that legend says that nearly every scene was just done with one take. And they almost always use that very first take. And here when we get our introduction to the captain and he flubs up his line like this. You're the one that talked me into bringing this moron from San Diego to fight the J Japanese Katana Gang. I have a feeling that legend is true. But I gotta say, I love this captain. He is like the best angry police captain ever. And he says some really crazy shit. I feel like somebody stuck a big club up my ass, and it hurts. I've got to figure out a way to get it out of there. All right. The scene also ends with a very elongated, bizarre pause. You son of a bitch! 
Come back here, you motherfucker! So now we get to the restaurant scene, which is iconic. For good reason, there are just so many incredible things happening in this scene. And one thing you'll notice is that as Samurai Cop is approaching this table of gang members, this conversation breaks out, and you can so tell that these shots were filmed in different locations, back and forth, and different times, and with different lights and everything. But this scene contains, hands down, one of the best one-shot, one-take insults I've ever seen. Now I'm telling these son of a bitches that we respect the Japanese of this country who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business, not for death merchants who distribute drugs to our children through schools and on the streets. Now I'm telling these motherfuckers that if they continue killing our children to make their precious millions that they deposit in their secret Swiss bank accounts, counselor, before your lawsuit even gets off the court clerk's desk, I'll have their stinking bodies in garbage bags and ship them back to Japan for fertilizer. Got it? Now I'm telling these son of a bitches, these motherfuckers, if they keep killing our children. <laughs> and the finale of the scene is so great as well, the samurai cop's partner laughing and saying this. Hey, counselor, <laughs> we'll see you in court. <laughs> the scene also ends with the most random encounter with a waiter I've ever seen in a movie. Who shot him? He. Who? Him. Who's him? Himself. Oh, he committed suicide. Yes. <laughs> what is the purpose? What's happening here? What does this mean? Now another incredibly random action scene erupts outside of this restaurant. Samurai cop chops off this guy's arm and it's amazing. The choreography here, I mean like what choreography? It's just a bunch of But hey, I mean at least it ends with a great joke. Captain Roman's gonna burn my ass. Yeah, he's gonna burn it. Charcoal black. <laughs> it is black. Right on. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. Where do I start? And again, I gotta say, the captain, best angry captain of all time. Can you get your ass out of my office or you'll have to go to surgery to get my foot out of it. Get out of here, you asshole, leave me alone. I'll see you in court. You motherfucker, I'll see you in hell. Leave me alone. Get a job. So again, Samurai Cop has one thing on his mind, and he comes off like a samurai stalker in this scene. He just really likes this blonde chick he saw at that restaurant, decides to follow her around because he really wants to get in her pants. And this scene ends with another incredibly pointless fight scene, and this guy swinging that bat, it's... Uh... <laughs> I can't... I'm constantly in shock. I'm constantly in shock. This movie got made. They made this. Somebody made it. Take that as inspiration. Everyone out there with great ideas. Samurai Cop got made. I'm reviewing Samurai Cop. If you have an idea, it's probably better than Samurai Cop. And you can probably direct and write it better than Samurai Cop was written and directed. So be inspired, people. This movie got made. And again, the women in this movie, the only reason women are in this movie are for Samurai Cop to fuck them, or for them to walk around and look sexy, or for them to do something that the people who made this movie think women do all the time. Seriously, look at this line. Hey, preacher. Yeah? You and I got nothing to do. Let's fuck. Later, when we're introduced to this character again, where is she? Oh, she's in the kitchen, of course. Seriously, everything about women in this movie is like the most sexist viewpoint of a woman you could possibly have. It's kind of sad. It's really sad, actually. So now this raid occurs on this house. They're trying to find the rest of these gang members. And the biggest star of this action scene is the Defender arcade machine. Because the hardcore drug dealers, they really love their Defender. I mean, it is really fun. This leads us into another horrible fight scene that's just everything about it's amazingly awful, but it's entertaining and his wig, I gotta say, this is one of the most obvious wig scenes. Now another terrible shootout scene with a very hilarious t-shirt, wig, and hat happens and it cuts incredibly abruptly to this. <laughs> I 
I mean, my God, the dubbing here, the ADR is so horrendous. Excuse me, where did the tall guy with the ponytail go? So Samurai Cop basically forces this girl to go on a date with him by stalking her to the church that she goes to and then pretending like he had to question her about this gang. But in reality, he's just taking her back to his house so they can get dressed in the most late 80s, early 90s swimsuits I've seen in so long and just prance around the beach for a while. So now the gang is looking for Samurai Cop and they somehow find all of his associates I don't know how, they just do. Hey, take it easy, man. Come on, talk to me, what, what do you want? I can kill you now, or I can relieve you of this gift, this black gift. I mean, I don't know what else to expect at this point. The abrupt shifts in tone in Samurai Cop are some of my favorite parts of this movie because it goes from like guys threatening to cut off somebody's dick to this. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. And we get another porno sex scene. Seriously, this goes on forever. And it's not sexy. It's incredibly awkward, actually. It's very bizarre and just off-putting and even slightly embarrassing. You're almost picturing them behind the camera like, slowly touching themselves like oh this is sex no don't cut just yet don't cut not just yet not just yet not just yet uh, okay okay you can cut now thank you so there's a shootout scene in which samurai cop and this girl are almost killed and in the very following scene she's like not even remotely affected by this she's just prancing around her home she's smiling she's all excited she has a new boyfriend she almost got killed like five minutes ago Whatever. So the captain gets really angry again and gives Samurai Cop and his partner permission to just go kill everyone. He literally says, just go kill everyone for me. Do it for me. And they're like, okay, cool. All right, sounds good to me, man. Yeah. And we get another horrendous action scene. Now I gotta say, at least 50% of this movie is people ducking for cover and then shooting. And then ducking for cover and then shooting. That's all this movie is. And I just want to know, like, in their desperate search for actors, when they found this guy, did they hire him because they thought he would be really good at dying on screen? Because if they did, they failed. So in the big finale scene with the boss, he's holding the woman hostage. There's a moment where Samurai Cop's partner could have taken care of business, and it's this moment. Now that she loves you, you have to worry about her life, not me. Neither do I. But he lets him know he's there. He could have had the jump on him. Why? What a dumbass. And he gets shot, but of course, he's wearing a bulletproof vest because, you know, He's the main character and he got shot, so he's obviously wearing a bulletproof vest. So after killing the boss of this gang, they show up at the last bad guy's house somehow. Now I've been waiting for there to be a reason for this movie to be called Samurai Cop for quite some time. So gratefully, some random goon just walks up to them with a sword while the two cops have guns and this guy's just like swinging the sword around and of course they kill the guy with the sword. So it's a really good thing that Samurai Cop can then pick up that sword and actually do some Something samurai-like and fight this last guy. And the way they swing their swords, it's so obviously sped up. It's sad. These people are desperate. They're just like, just get it done, okay? Just film the fucking movie so I can go home and go to bed. And I can't help but notice that Samurai Cop really looks like Rambo here. This movie is basically like an amalgamation of 80s action movies that were good. And then the director was like, I'm gonna try to remake those. So Samurai Cop wins, of course, and the guy kills himself because honor. <laughs> Because after being a drug dealer and a murderer and a guy who tortures women, he's really concerned about honor. So we get more swimsuits and the movie's over. Wow, I, 
I had no words when I watched this movie, guys. I mean, you've been recommending this for quite some time, and you've been wanting to see a hilariosity of this, and I had no idea what to expect. Tim Reich Op honestly changed my life. I don't even know what to think or do or expect. This movie has changed everything. Everything's different now. Samurai Cop, you, you broke me. If you've never seen Samurai Cop, uh, check it out sometime, I guess. I'm gonna have another hilariosity for you very soon on Valentine's Day, in fact, and that's gonna be with my wife. It's gonna be a special hilariosity and I cannot wait to bring it to you guys. It's another review you guys have been requesting, surprisingly, for a while that I had no desire to do. And then I just went, wait, Valentine's Day is coming up. Perfect. I can't wait to bring that to you guys. Thank you so much as always for watching and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.